Gray dots are extremely important. They're a very overlooked muscle that a lot of people don't train. Not only are they hard to isolate when you are working out, but it's not really a muscle that you use in your daily life. We obviously use like our biceps and our back and our core and our legs doing like our day-to-day -day stuff. But unless you're actually isolating and training your rear belt, it's not going to be a muscle that you hit like on a daily basis. So one kind of little tip, and this is going to work for about 80% of shoulder exercises. It's not um, like a black and white thing, but it's, it's a good rule of thumb if you aren't super familiar with like muscle anatomy. If you're training your shoulders, whatever part of your shoulder is on top is going to be the part of your shoulder that is recruited the most. Again, this isn't set in stone, there's a few exceptions, but for the most part, so if you're doing a lateral raise, the side of your shoulder is on top, so you're primarily recruiting the muscle fibers from your side delt. If you are doing a front raise, you're primarily recruiting the front delt fibers, and then if you are doing a um, rear delt raise or like a bent over fly, you are primarily going to recruit the back of your shoulder because the back of your shoulder is on top. In a front raise, the front of your shoulder is on top. In something like a shoulder press, again, everyone's body is a little bit different. Um, so depending on the setup and the structure of your body, you might recruit a little bit more or less of each muscle. Um, but it's, it's primarily for the front delt, but you will be recruiting all three. Just like in an Arnold press, again, you're going to be recruiting all three even more so than just a normal shoulder press. With a lot of exercises, there are more than one correct way to do it. There's many correct ways to do a lot of exercises. Today, we're just going to be talking primarily about a basic um, rear delt reverse fly or a rear delt raise of the same exercise. And there are a few variations. So depending on what specific variation of this you have in your workout plan, you might perform it a little bit differently. First thing, and this will apply to every exercise, you always want to set up, initiate, and control your exercises. So the setup is very important. If you're setting up your exercises wrong, um, you're already off to not so good of a start. So setting it up first. So we're gonna go over a basic rear delt raise setup. So when you are doing that, you're gonna to want to be, I'm gonna go from the side so you can see, you're gonna to want to drive your feet down into the floor like you would for almost every exercise. Keep your core engaged, just as you would for anything. You're gonna hinge over. So especially if this exercise is kind of new to you or you're just getting back into it, you're always gonna to wanna to hinge your body forward a little more than you kind of think you should because it's gonna be human nature when that exercise gets hard, you're going to want to start to stand up. And if you can see, I don't even have any weights in my hands yet, um, but if I'm doing my rear delt fly from this position, I have that good range of motion here. As I fatigue, my body is going to naturally want to come up and then you can see that range of motion is greatly reduced and I'm no longer even hitting my rear delts because now you can see my rear delts aren't on the top. It's gonna to be more side and front delt the more I come up. So set up is super key. Drive your feet in, keep your body low. You're gonna to have to actively think about maintaining that hinge in your hip and keeping your body about parallel to the floor. Next thing we wanna think about, again, you can apply this concept to any exercise. We want to um, lengthen and shorten our muscles. That's all that working out is. So on your rear delt, you wanna think about, it. so the origin of your rear delt is actually like on the spine of your scapula. So it's back here and then it inserts on your humerus. So about here, you can see mine right there. So that's your rear delt. Um, so to shorten it, we wanna get it into its most shortened position, which is going to be here. And to lengthen it, we are gonna stretch it out. You can see that muscle stretching out as we lower the weight. So that is all we wanna do. Now to maximize that, when you are doing your rear delt flies, you don't want to think back because if you think about pulling those weights back, you're gonna recruit into your back and into your rhomboids down the middle of your back by your spine. So you really wanna think about pushing the weights out, not back, out. So if I'm doing this from the front, you're gonna be nice and bent over here, shoulders down away from your ears, body nice and low about parallel to the ground. And then you're gonna think about your rear delt on the back of your shoulder and push those weights out away from your body, engage in the back of your shoulder, and then return to your starting position, out. As opposed to, if you look from the back here, back like this would be, no, that's a lot of rhomboid, we wanna think out. The next thing we wanna think about is control. So like with any exercise, we don't want to be using momentum. If you're using momentum, you're actually gonna take away from the working muscle. So 
let's take our dumbbells here. So if I'm setting this up from the front, I got my stance, got my core tight, shoulders pushed down away from my ears, not pinching my shoulder blades. You want to start your weights for a typical rear delt fly in line with your legs. Um, because there, you can already feel your muscles working. There's already tension onto your rear delts. If we start the exercise here, there's no work being done here. It has nothing to do with our rear delt, and this is just an easy way to use momentum in your exercise. So again, we want to start with tension on the muscle. We're going to set up our stance, initiate with that muscle, and then we want to control the movement. So here, we're going to fly it up, pause at the top about half a second, control it back on the way down, right back to that starting position. Again, not here, because that's just going to let us use that inertia. So here we go, line up with my legs, body nice and low, thinking about the back of my shoulder, and I'm going to fly out to the side and control it back down. Shortening my muscle at the top, squeezing it, there's a contraction there, lengthening it as we lower. Again, it's always good to move slow, we never want to rush through things. Okay, so the next thing, um, if you guys have a mirror, if you're training at home, you will want to take a quick peek at your form. Again, you also want to have your head in line with your spine, but you kind of want to see what you're doing. Um, if you don't have a mirror, take a video of yourself and then watch it back. So one of the common um, mistakes I see with this exercise is um, people set it up perfectly, uh, they're here, getting ready to go, and then as they fatigue, they start flinging the weights with their lower portion of their arm. So it will look, if I had weights in my hand, it would look something like this, so if you can see me here, like that. So again, we want to think about the muscle in the back of our arm. Our shoulder, rear delt, any delt, has nothing to do with from our elbow to our hand. Absolutely nothing. So the more that we are bending our elbow, the less work our shoulder is doing, okay? So that's gonna go for anything. Even if you are doing a rear delt, I think some of you guys who have the gym version might have like a rear delt cross with the cables. And again, if you're doing that rear delt cross and you're bending your arms to do it, that's working my tricep. And that's completely taking, you can see my tricep contracting, you can see my rear delt doing nothing. So that's completely taking the work away from our rear delts. And that's why rear are so important to know what they are and so important to think about them and learn how to contract them because again it's it's not like innate in us as a human to use our rear delts because other parts of our body are so prone to taking over so um as i said rear delt is only concerned with basically from your shoulder blade like almost at your spine to your elbow from your elbow to your hand has nothing to do with our shoulders it has nothing to do with our back it's literally just an extension so you want to think about your arm as one whole unit that's going to move that shoulder. Because if we're here, thinking of our arm as one whole unit, we're going to fly out to the side and then control it back in. If we're going like this, again, you can see it's taking work away from the rear delt. And not only that, but often when people do this and they fling it here, their shoulder will actually start to cave forward. And that's exactly, exactly the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're trying to strengthen up our rear delt so that it will pull our shoulders back and maintain that good posture so we can effectively train our back, we can effectively train our chest and our front delt. If we have posture that looks like this, our rear delts are extremely weak, they're extremely stretched out, and we might not even have the strength or the mobility to put ourselves into good posture. So. Um, your arms for the rear delt flies for the basic version. Um, you can keep that little bend in your elbow, but again, that bend is not going to change. It's going to be that constant bend. What are you guys saying? <laughs> That's me with the bad posture. Yes, but actually you corrected it. Like it's, it's really good now. <laughs> but like, if you have bad posture, I know that a lot of, some of you guys, not a lot, some of you guys do have bad posture. Bad posture can 100% be corrected through exercise. I think Melissa is watching and she 100% corrected her posture for exercise. It's like the most drastic transformation of posture I've ever seen in my life. Like she literally was like this and now we have it perfect. Um, actually we're working on it again, but it can be fixed. <laughs> um, so yes, we don't want to ever have your shoulder caving in and we're not going over rows, but same thing is going to apply when you're going into a row. Again, your back has nothing to do with your lower arm. So you really want to think about like, opening up through the shoulders if you were to do a row same kind of idea when you're doing your fly common thing not gonna do it with weights but here and let the shoulders cave K 
cave, cave, or turn your traps on. You always wanna be pushing your shoulders down away from your ears. Um, what else do I have written down in my notes here? That's about the main concepts. Um, I will go over a couple of the other variations to the flies because I know some of you guys have those. So for the rear delt flies that are the elevated version, when you're doing those, again, set your body up nice and low. You're gonna bring your weights out in front of your eyes and then you're going to pull the weights up. Again, reset it right in front of your eyes, body nice and low, pull at the back of your shoulder, pull up. You want your lower arm about in line with your ear. Here, I'm holding this all with my rear delt. Again, rear delts are always gonna be an exercise that you want to go relatively light for. Um, not like, the heavier you go, often the more diminishing it will be because rear delts are a smaller muscle and all those bigger, more powerful muscles are going to want to take over. I basically covered everything I want to say. So the biggest takeaway is make sure you set up your exercises, make sure you think about the muscles that you're working and initiate the movement with that target muscle. Make sure you always control the movement, no momentum. You want to be in control of that weight at all times. So you should be able to stop moving at any portion of that exercise to know if you're in control of that weight. Um, that's about it. So hopefully you guys got some info from this.